السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all praises due to Allah alone we praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leads us say none can show him guidance may the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him my dear viewers welcome to another live edition of our program Ask Huda another blessed day in a blessed month of Ramadan today is the 16th of Ramadan uh Allow me to remind you with our contact information in the beginning of this episode. Phone numbers beginning with area code 002, then 023855131. Alternatively, area code 002, then 01005469323. And um, somehow, brothers and sisters, the viewers put a lot of emphasis on one particular WhatsApp number. So this time, we're putting the other number first so that this way, please contact this number as well because there is like heavy traffic, traffic jam on the other number. Uh, the area code is 001-347-80625, okay? So this is preferable. Both are working, but in order to be able to accommodate more calls. Last WhatsApp number is area code 001-361-489-1503. So alternate between this number and that number. If this is busy, try the other number and so on. Uh, we have some callers already on the line. Assalamu alaikum, Saadiya from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Sheikh Salah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask with the Sister Saadiya. Um, um, Sheikh, I wanted to know if uh, a lady is in her menses uh, during the last 10 days of Ramadan, uh, what is the best way she can avail uh, the same rewards as the others during these? nights because these nights has uh, al-qadr you know yeah so what should she do that she can uh, gain the same reward how should she uh, do her ibadahs like she cannot pray she cannot read the quran the masaf but something which she can do okay thank you sister saadia from united arab emirates and this is a very serious question especially it's only like four nights left for uh, ramadan or even three for the last 10 nights of Ramadan, inshallah, to begin and experiencing Laylat al Qadr uh, and so on. Uh, it is agreed upon that women during their menses, they don't fast during the day and they don't pray any prayer. But with regards to the recitation of the Quran, even though the vast majority of the fuqaha, like Imam Abu Hanifa, wa Shafi'i, wa Malik, and Ahmad al Nur, for his opinions, are of the view that, or they have agreed that women during their menses are not allowed to touch the Mus'haf nor read the Qur'an uh, as a form of recitation um, by analogy to everyone who is experiencing major impurity. But we have other scholars who are of the view that women during their menses may recite the Qur'an provided they don't touch the Mus'haf with their hands. So they can recite it from a tab, from a uh, smart device, or if the if a woman is wearing gloves, can read from the Quran and flip the pages, such as Shaykh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and one of the opinions of Imam Ibn Ahmad Ibn Hanbal. May Allah uh, be pleased with all of them. Due to lack of straightforward and authentic evidence that forbids women from reciting Quran during their menses, and it is known that at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, the women used to read Quran, memorize Quran, revise Quran, and teach Quran. So it should have been something clearly known, or the Prophet ﷺ would have specified that by saying that don't you read Quran while the in the menses. So, sister, um, accordingly, you may recite Quran. Okay, I mentioned the two different opinions, and also other things I will discuss with you, inshallah to do during the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan if you're having your menses after this call or calls. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aziza from Qatar, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. 
I have uh, two questions today, mm-hmm. inshallah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one, uh, with regards the fasting of the sixth day after Shawwal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question is, uh, is it necessary that, that we have to complete the miss, uh, the miss uh, fasting first before we do the six days? What if the the person they have the fifteen days of uh, miss uh, fasting? Okay. And the second question is, uh, can we combine the uh, sunnah of the sixth day of Shawwal fasting with the miss uh, fasting? And my second question is with regards about the ruling of the hijab uh, for women in terms of the length. Is it necessary that she must cover her shoulder too? Means that uh, if her hijab uh, is long enough to cover up to her chest, but it's not covering her shoulder, means that the other side is shorter. It's on top of the shoulder. Uh, that's it, my question for today. Jazakallah khairan, uh, Sheikh. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aziza wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Assalamu alaikum Akbar from uh, Holland. Assalamu alaikum Akbar from Holland. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I can barely hear you Akbar. Would you please raise your voice? Akbar. I'm going to Umrah. Akbar. Assalamu alaikum. Can you raise your voice, please? Can you hear me? Now I hear you. Go ahead. Yes, brother. Brother, my question is regarding uh, going to Umrah. Mm -hmm. And it's regarding if somebody does not read Arabic or can't um, read Arabic and to make the du'as and the supplications, can you do it in English or does it have to be in Arabic? All right. Thank you. Brother Akbar from Holland. What do we do? What does a woman do if she's having the menses in order to get the same privilege like others during the last 10 nights of Ramadan? She cannot pray. We spoke about the recitation of the Quran, so you can sit and recite Quran the whole night if you want to and alternate between the recitation of Quran, recitation of adhkar, dhikr, and supplication and dua. And Aisha radiallahu anha have asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, what if I figure that tonight is the night of the grand night or the night of Al-Qadr? What should I do best? He said, supplicate to Allah, say, O oh Allah, inna ka'afuun. O oh Allah, you love al-afu. You are the pardoning and you love to pardon. So pardon me. Allahumma inna ka'afuun. Tuhibbu al-afwa, fa'fu anni. So alternating between supplicating, reciting Quran, making istighfar, reciting adhkar, giving sadaqah, you know, donating and giving in a charity, all of that would make it up for you, insha'Allah. When a person does not choose to skip the ibadah, and it's something that is imposed on them, like women during their menses, they are not missing anything. And the alternative is sufficient, insha'Allah. May Allah accept from all of us, uh, our sister, from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from Somalia, welcome to Ask Uda. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. My question is. Well, I cannot Can hear you. Muhammad. Okay, one more time, then I would have to proceed on with answering uh, some of the pending questions. All right, try again, Brother Muhammad from Somalia. We have four lines, mashallah. You can also present your question on the page if you're not having an access to call. Aziz, uh, Sister Aziza from uh, Qatar, she's asking about when it comes to fasting the six days of the month of Shawwal, what shall we do if I owe some days due to the menses of Ramadan? Should I do the mess days first and make them up first? Or it's okay to begin by fasting the six days of Shawwal? For those who are not familiar with the six days of Shawwal, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan, فأتبعه, then he follows the fasting of Ramadan by another fasting of six days during the following month, which is the month of Shawwal. His reward will be similar to the reward of a person who has been fasting throughout the entire year. 
And if he does that on annual basis, his reward will be the reward of a person who's been fasting the whole dahr, the entire life. And that is because in our religion, Allah rewards the least reward for a single good deed is 10 times more. Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. Whoever brings or does a good deed, for him the reward is 10 times more. So 30 days and 6 days is 360 days, if we're talking about the reward. The Prophet ﷺ recommended fasting the 6 days of Shawwal. It doesn't have to be consecutive, but it's limited only to the month of Shawwal. So that's why if the sister is capable to begin by making up the missed days, if it is 3 days, 4 days, 5 days, then fast the 6 days of Shawwal. This is the ideal scenario because making up the missed mandatory fasting should have the given the priority. But sometimes the person was traveling and she had the menses or, 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 and now she wants to take advantage. There is only a few days remaining in Shawwal and she wants to fast the six days of Shawwal. She may fast them, then make up the missed days of Ramadan because Aisha radiallahu anha said, sometimes I use not to make the missed days which I missed during Ramadan due to the menses until Shaban of the following year, which means a few days before the following Ramadan. As far as, can I combine the intention, like one sister owes six days of missed fasting during Ramadan due to the menses. And now, luckily we are recommended to fast six days of Shawwal in order to get the reward of forever. So can I fast those six days with both intentions, dual intentions, there is no overlapping between the Fard and the Nafila. This is something mandatory and this is something recommended. So these are two different independent, uh, you know, uh, 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 acts of worship. You cannot combine them with the same intention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kifaya from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yep, go ahead, Sister Kifaya. Please, I have, I have three questions. Mm -hmm. My first question, first question is about Tarawi. I do perform my Tarawi at night in the house. So I do make six raka and complete it with five raka before Fajr. So sometimes, I don't know if it's right, but sometimes after making the six raka, I feel like, oh, I have enough strength to complete it. But before starting, I have intention of making six. So can I complete it since I have the strength? Or I have to wait till, till the morning before completing it? That's the first question. And my second question is about a large food like like getting a frozen food like frozen chicken which are not there when it was killed maybe it's killed with um with um in a lot way with mercy or it's not a dead um animal so me eating is is this a lot or a run and the third question is uh, there's a sister she is a single mother and um she called a child by a, a last name and she takes responsibility on the child so I asked her why. So she said there was a time she doesn't practice Islam. She was born in Islam, but she doesn't practice Islam. And she got the child out of Nekai. And she was told that a child having out of Nekai is a bastard in Islam. And um, she should be the one to take responsibility on the child and not the father. And she be at last name and not the father's last name. Okay. Thank you, Sister Kifaya from... Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Noor from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Noor from Bangladesh. Can you hear me? I know there is a delay, but uh, we can only wait for. Uh, a couple more seconds. Safi from India. Assalamu alaikum, Safi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead. Uh, 
I'd like to remind the viewers, once you get hold of the line and once you're live on Ask Oda, just go ahead and present your questions. We don't have much time to waste. I appreciate that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Go ahead and present your question, Safi. Wa alaikum as -salam. We had greeted twice. Michael, I have two questions. Quickly, go ahead. My first question is what to say after four rakat in Tarawi? Mm -hmm. What to say after four rakat in Tarawi? Okay, next question, and please. Second, uh, can you give me a tips to memorize the Quran? Okay, do you know how to read first? Yes. You do? Okay, good. I mean, you read very well or you just, uh, you know, you're a learner? Huh? All right. Okay, next please. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Aziz from Netherlands. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Aziz. Wa alaikum salam wa matullah wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you today? I'm doing just fine, alhamdulillah. And I'm fasting too. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Sheikh, I have, uh, I, have, uh, I have a couple of questions. Okay. The uh, first question is about zakat al maut. Uh, I have like my my family. They used to pay for for us zakat, you know, for us the kid. But I'm here in the Netherlands right now. I do like I do just like I have some I have some money coming. So I want to know like uh, wh what is the requirement? What do I need to have like in my account to be able to pay zakat? And when is the deadline to pay actually zakat amount and for the zakat of fit too I have a question about it too is like can I just do like for zakat of fit like let's say like on the 28th of Ramadan like bring like some sweets at the masjid or I have to go to to give it to someone um, I just want to know about those two Tab, uh, Abdel Aziz, this is something that really uh, concerns everyone uh, he's asking how much income do I have uh, to have in order to uh, be required to pay zakah. It's not about the income. The zakah requirements two conditions. Number one, there is something called nisab. And the second is rounding up the hawl or the lunar year. So the nisab is certain amount of money is normally uh, evaluated against gold or silver. The uh, measurement of gold or silver is either 85 gram of gold, 24 carat, or 595 gram of silver. So if you have, it's approximately 3,500, 3,600 US dollar, as you know that the gold prices, silver prices will go up and down. So if one day you started possessing this amount, okay, and you have them with you until next year, the same time, and uh, we're talking about which time? The lunar calendar. So we'll go by Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qiyadah, Dhul Hijjah, not by June, July, August, September, November, October, okay? Because the, the, the Islamic calendar is shorter, a few days shorter. And it, uh, it is based on the lunar calendar, not the solar one. So if today, today, let's say that today is the 16th of Ramadan, Allah blessed me with some money through earning, through uh, salaries. I have possessed $4,000. So this is a little above the nisab, the requirements. And the $4,000, I spend them. I earn them again. Now I have eight. Now I have 12. Before 16th of Ramadan next year, I spend everything. I don't have any money with me. Then you don't owe any zakah. Rather, you should receive zakah. But 16th Ramadan of the next year, because last year 16th of Ramadan, I happen to have 4,000. 16th of Ramadan of the next year, I have 60,000, 80,000. So you pay zakah on the entire sum of money which you already have. Because since the day you started possessing what, you, what is known as the minimum threshold, which is zakatable, whatever is added to it is all accounted for at the time of the payment of the zakah. 
we'll answer Zakatul Fitr after this call, inshallah. Brother Numan from United Kingdom. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Go ahead, Numan. Uh, Akhi, I have two questions. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, my first question is um, so if, um, if a woman who comes off a period and she is required to do a ghusl, but once she's off a period, before she does uh, ghusl, can she actually be intimate with her husband, or she has to do ghusl first, then be intimate, then do another ghusl? That's the first question. And the second question is, uh, there are there, there are there are two uh, masajid near my house, and both of them have uh, slightly different timings for fajr, about nearly 40 to 35 to 40 minutes difference, and both claim that both are correct. And I don't know which one to follow. If I follow, uh, so I was thinking, if I follow the early time one, then I'm thinking the person said, obviously, carry on eating until there's no proper time. So am I just trying to? Um, what is what, what does Montada do, brother uh, Newman from the UK? Not too far from London. I, I know uh, you're in Leicester or uh, Cardiff. Or no, 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 no. I, I, I live I live in Reading. Reading, okay. It's, 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 it's south. Okay. I believe uh, Al Muntada are very accurate and trustworthy guys. So why don't you take their calendar? You know, Al Muntada Al Islami. Okay. 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 So, yeah. Uh, so that would, uh, that would help you, uh, inshallah, a great deal. As far as your first question, when a woman is pure, and her menses is over, she is not actually pure until she performs ghusl. Yeah, we know that she cannot pray until she performs ghusl. She cannot uh, perform tawaf until she performs ghusl. And also she cannot go intimate with her husband before performing ghusl. Even if she does wash the orifice and the private part, but she must perform ghusl before being intimate with her husband. Your questions were answered. Assalamu alaikum. Idris from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Idris. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, brother Idris. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day, a brother whom, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, from what is apparent to me, he follows the Sunnah, the Quran, and the Sunnah. He said something new to me, and I wanted to, you know, I couldn't find any reference to it, so I wanted to clarify with you. He was making wudu, and after he was done washing his feet, he was wetting his beard. So, and he said that's from the sunnah, but I, that was strange to me. I had never heard that or seen that before, so I just wanted to uh, bring that up to you uh, to ask if you have any reference for that. Okay, got your question, brother Idris from the USA. Abdul Aziz from the Netherlands also asked about Zakatul Fatr. Can he pay it on the 28th of Ramadan? Yes, a few days before Eid, a Muslim may proceed towards the payment of Zakatul Fitr and even its distribution. The purpose of Zakatul Fitr is to enrich the poor on the Eid day, to make themselves sufficient, not to urge them to beg or ask for food or for, you know, so everybody will be celebrating. It is due, it's due time, it becomes mandatory at sunset of the last day of Ramadan. And then it becomes over when the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum on the Eid day, and whenever he starts the prayer, whenever he makes the first takbir for the Eid, because the khutbah follows the prayer. So if a person didn't pay during this very short period of time from, <laughs> yani, it's only the one night, sunset, until almost sunrise of the following day. So that's why the scholars say that it's permissible to advance it three or four days in advance in order to be able to dispense it and to cover the needs of all the poor before the Eid. Um, <coughs> it is worth of mentioning here that Zakatul Fitr according to the vast majority of the scholars, should be paid as the Prophet ﷺ said, it is a sa'a, a sa'a is a measure, 
which is equivalent to approximately 2.5 or 6 or 7 kilograms of grains, wheat, rice, raisin, dates, okay, uh, per person. And whether you are rich or poor, if you have enough food in your pantry, in your clothes, uh, in, in your closet, uh, at your home, you have enough food for a day and night, then you should give zakat or fatr. Somebody may say that I, I do have enough food, but unfortunately, the food, the zakat that I, I owe, I only can afford three persons, not six persons. Fine, pay zakat for three persons and you're exempt from the rest. So the person maybe end up paying zakat al-fitr and also receiving zakat from others. And that is permissible if he is in need. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Noor from Bangladesh is back on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Noor, go ahead. Wa alaikum. I have two questions. My first question is, I am a hen artist. So okay. it is, is it permissible to work as a hen artist? Uh, my another question is, uh, I, yeah, I'm a hen artist. So my another question is, uh, when I work as a hen artist, uh, the girl I do henna for, not all of them are covering. So is, is it permissible for me to do henna on someone who is a kafir or not covering her hands? Okay, got your questions, Sister Noor, and everybody, we gotta take a short break. We'll be back, inshallah, in a few minutes to answer those pending questions and take some more. So stay tuned, we'll be back, inshallah, in a couple of minutes. Dear brothers and sisters, this is your program, Flashback. So we would like to know, Sheikh Rafat, what is the idea behind Flashback? So Flashback program is uh, stories from the past that will affect us in the rest of our life, inshallah. We want also to know one of the examples about the lessons that we're going to learn from. So some of these stories that we will have, inshallah, is like the story of Ibrahim ibn Adham, when the people came and asked him, why our dua is not answered? So he said that our hearts dies because of uh, 10 things happening in our life. These 10 things, inshallah, will be able to explain them and narrate them to you during this program, inshallah. So dear brothers and sisters, don't miss this opportunity of watching the program of Flashback. Assalamu alaikum wa my name is John Fontaine and we'd just like to invite you for, for the brand new series to Huda TV this Ramadan and the series is called Judaism and Christianity in the Light of Islam. Throughout this series we're going to be discussing the Islamic perspective of revelation, the Islamic perspective of the people of the book, the people of the book from the time of the original prophets, also the people of the book at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the people of the book of today. We're going to be discussing the books that they have. We're also going to be discussing some of the interactions of the Prophet وسلم, that he had with some of the kings around Arabia and also some of the 
tribes within Arabia. We're also going to be mentioning some authentic stories, authentic hadith regarding people of the book from the past. Make sure you join us this Ramadan on Huda TV for Judaism and Christianity in the light of Islam. وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ فَأَيَّ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ تُنْكِرُونَ In Quran Circle 5, we will focus on the universal signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the Quran. The universal signs, the favors of Allah, the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. The wisdom behind the mention of many of the universal signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is to establish the evidence of the Tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill the hearts with these evidences, with these signs so the hearts will be full of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deeds that fill these hearts with the love of Allah the hope for the rewards from Allah, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we know the creation of Allah, the heavens, the earth, what's in between, but there is nothing like the book of Allah, the speech of Allah, to describe to us the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Join us in Quran Circle 5. We we'll listen to the verses of the Quran, we we'll reflect upon the meanings of these verses, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts as a result of that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second segment of today's program of Ask Huda. Assalamu alaikum, we have some callers. Brother Hamid from the United Kingdom. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How, how, how are you doing? You okay? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Brother Hamid, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to ask ab about uh, Ramadan, uh, Taraway. You know, on uh, Hadith, it says, uh, if, if you start with the Imam the Taraway until you finish, you're going to, it looks like uh, you pray the whole night. You've yeah. done uh, Qiyam al -Lail. Yeah. But you know, sometimes uh, um, I finish my work at uh, 7, uh, sorry, at 10 o'clock. So when I go uh, towards Masjid, I'm going to be late uh, from the Isha. So I can reach to the Isha. So when I started, the Imam already prayed that railway two rakats or one rakat. So I'm going to start that rakat with the Imam until the finishing, like with the waiting. <coughs> mm. Am I getting the same reward, like a, a Qiyam al light or not? That's all, Shaykh, I just want to ask. Okay. And you said, of course, that is due to your work commitment. You leave work late. So by the time you reach there, they have already prayed Isha and two rakats of Taraweeh, correct? Yes, yes, Shaykh. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Got your question. Before I tackle any question, since yesterday and subhanAllah in Taraweeh and in the morning after Fajr, I have been contemplating and thinking about a question which was presented yesterday by Sister Noreen, I believe from Nairobi, who called twice to inquire about her son's job. 
who took a job to sell credit cards. Then only after three days when they realized and they knew that this is haram, he quit. And she was concerned about the profit or the earning, the payment that he collected over the three days that he worked. Subhanallah, when a person has true iman and pure instinct and fitrah, even a little bit of haram causes severe pain to them. So they leave the job and they don't know what is going to happen next, but they want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Versus a person who is living their entire life in haram, earning from haram, providing their children from haram, and they care, they don't care the least. They don't care much. They say, well, I was told, or a sheikh here or there said it's halal. So I kind of respect and envy in a good sense sister Noreen and her family for being extra cautious especially with the matter of earning and her son perhaps a newly grad and to find a job it's not really something uh, easy and then he quits the job because he knew that it is haram may Allah give you a better job and a greater risk and I'm sure one day we'll get to meet where you'll be a business owner and say alhamdulillah I did not continue with the job. Now I'm a big businessman. I'm a business owner and I have a few hundred people working for me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Umar from Bahrain. Assalamu alaikum, Umar. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi. Ahlan wa sahlan ya Umar. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. 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 Sheikh, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. The first question is regarding the people who comes when the Imam is on Ruku. They skip the Takbir al ihram when they are coming in mm -hmm. the prayer, joining the prayer because they want to join the Raka on Ruku. Mm -hmm. And they don't, sometimes even they don't recite the, you know, the opening recitation, that one. I don't know if it's uh, compulsory, if it, if, whether it affects the prayer or no, the Takbir al ihram and the recitation when uh, we are opening up the prayer. The second question is mm. regarding the last 10 days when we are waiting for Laylatul Qadil. I read somewhere they are saying that it's better to to use all the 10 days. But some people, they say 27, mostly 27 and 29. This is where most people wait for Laylatul Qadil. I wanted to enlighten me more regarding this one, Sheikh. The Khair. whole 10 nights, brothers and sisters, don't take chances. This Ramadan could be our last Ramadan. We really never know if we're going to witness another Ramadan. And this one single night, which is one of the last 10 nights, as in the sound hadith, there is a general consensus that it is one of the last 10 nights. Which night? Different opinions. 27th, no, 23rd, maybe 25th, maybe 29th. So there are, you know, some hadith, it is specified on the 27th, but also we know that the Prophet ﷺ said, I was made to forget it because of, you know, some companions were quarreling. So he said, seek it, il tamisuha fil ashri al akhir, seek it in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. It's only 10 nights, so don't take chances, okay? And inspire your children, say it's one of those nights, and it keeps changing. So if this year is on the 27th, it could be next year, 25th or the 20th. It's one of the odd nights. Take the whole 10 nights. It's a wonderful opportunity to boost your iman, to come close to Allah, to build up an asset of good deeds, to show Allah that you really sincerely want to become a good person. So um, rely on this opinion, not the other one. When you join the jama'ah, and you want to catch the raka'ah with the imam because he's bound down, you got to first say, Allahu Akbar, the opening takbir, takbiratul ihram, then place the right on the left, then make another takbir. Even if you don't get to recite anything, then make another takbir for ruku'ah. You cannot jump from the street into ruku'ah, nor can you jump from the street into sujood. You have to begin with the opening takbir while in the standing position facing the qibla. Allahu Akbar, you formulated an intention in your heart, you're praying asr. The imam has already prayed the first rak'ah or second in his ruku'ah. You want to catch the rak'ah by joining him in ruku'ah. Do not let this hurry make you skip the opening takbir because it's like you jump from the window. That doesn't count. You have to open the door, 
الله أكبر. Then another takbir for ruku'a. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Suhaila from Poland. Assalamu alaikum sister Suhaila. Suhaila. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister Suhaila. I'm listening. I have one question. Uh, that I call from Poland. Uh, uh, one year ago. And uh, I have already husband, but he is Hindu. And even if I try to explain to him, he know and he was that he will never accept. So my question is, should I leave him? Uh, because he is very good, good life here, but he no accept Islam. Hmm. Okay, Sister Suhaila, sure I will answer your question until we get there. I make sincere dua for you and your husband. May Allah open his heart to guide him to the truth and make him monotheistic and believe in one God. And that would solve the entire problem. Otherwise, we'll learn what you should do, inshallah, from an Islamic perspective. I don't speak on behalf of the law of any other. I only speak on behalf of what does Islam, the Quran, and the uh, Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa say. Assalamu alaikum. Mahmoud from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum, Mahmoud. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead, I'm listening. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Malam. Go ahead and present your question. Now, Malam, my question is this. Uh, the, uh, I want to know the ruling for bringing small children that are less uh, than seven years to the mosque. I didn't get the question. Pardon me. Can you repeat that again, Mahmoud? Use said, what to the mosque? I, I said bringing children who are less than seven years old to the mosque. Bringing your young kids to the mosque? Yes, yes. Who are less than seven years? Okay. Okay. I got your question. Okay, Mahmoud. Sure, inshallah. I got your question. Um, I think let's put uh, the calls on hold for a little bit because we have some, you know, serious questions I need to tackle first. Uh, Aziza from Qatar, hijab. If you're wearing your hijab, do I have to cover the shoulders with the khimar? Uh, the ayah of Surah An-Nur, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ayah number 31, Surah An-Nur, وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَىٰ جُذُوبِهِنْ The word jub covers the bosoms and the chest. So it's supposed to cover the head and what is down up to the chest. This is a khimar. And beneath it is the outer garment or the abaa. Sa'id ibn Jubayr, may Allah be pleased with him. According to this ayah, then covering the shoulders, the, the, the covering the bosom and the chest is mandatory with the same head cover. With the same head cover. The purpose of hijab is to conceal what is beneath it and is to provide a sign of chastity, not to wear anything that attracts people to look at you. So when we see a woman is wearing a veil, a face veil, but this face veil is very tight, shaping the head. The abaa is shiny, glittery, is very tight, revealing the details of the body. This is not hijab from an Islamic perspective, even though you can only see her eyes. You can see the kuhl and the eyeliners and all that. That's not hijab from an Islamic perspective. The Islamic perspective hijab is to provide chastity for the woman, okay? And to conceal the zina, to keep the adornment and the attractions only for her husband at home, not for the outside. I see a uh, lot of ordinary hijab, but it shows modesty. Uh, we see the Malaysian hijab, we see uh, the Shami hijab, and all of that. It doesn't have to be like you know a woman covering her entire body, wearing a coat on top. So in this case, 
the coat is uh, not covered with the head scarf but the woman is modest and she's covering whatever Allah has ordered her to cover you know why I was saying that Sayyid ibn Jubayr radiallahu anhu said that the khimar should cover all of that because sometimes when the woman's clothes are tight without the khimar it will reveal the details of her body and the chest and, and all of that but if this is not the case and the khimar is covering the bosom and the chest but not the shoulders that too is permissible if the rest of the body is covered properly I hope you understand what I'm saying um, Akbar from Holland I am going for Umrah I don't know Arabic can I recite the adhkar or the supplications in Dutch for innocence look uh, Habibi look my dear brother in Umrah you just need to do three things Ihram which you say Labbaika Umrah two words if you say it in English if you say Labbaika and you say you intend to do Umrah that's sufficient I think you know how to say labbaik, labbaik umratan, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, because you will keep saying this, you know, very frequently until you come to do the second pillar, which is tawaf. If you do the tawaf while performing, uh, while maintaining tahara, even if you don't say a word, that is acceptable. If you do sa'i between Safa and Marwa, which is the third pillar, without reciting any adhkar, that too is acceptable and you fulfill the umrah, and now you can do tahallul. So the adhkar are recommended supplications. If you don't know how to say it in Arabic, you can recite it in your language, insha'Allah, and there is no blame upon you. Kifaya from Nigeria, uh, she prays tarawih at home and sometimes she feels tired, so that she makes witch. What if she can pray afterward? That too is permissible. If you intend and you know that you will be up to pray again, then it's better to postpone the witch to the last. But if, it is, if you think or if you're afraid that I'm not sure, whether I'll be able to make it or not, then wrap up your prayer with witr. And if you got up fresh again and you want to pray again, pray without having to pray another witr. Uh, the frozen chicken, and she doesn't know it's halal, and whether it's uh, slaughtered halal or not. If it doesn't say it's halal, don't eat it. Uh, a child who's born out of wedlock is to be ascribed for the family lineage to his mother, not to the biological father. And the biological father of an illegitimate uh, son who was born out of woodlock doesn't have any relation with him whatsoever. So even the matter of spending and supporting is not due upon him because he's not recognized as father. Unless if they got married uh, later on after making tawbah. Uh, Safi from India, what do we say after the four rakahs in taraweeh? There is no specific prescribed supplication but istighfar is recommended after every prayer whether it's fard or nafl so reciting istighfar raising your hands and making whatever dua is recommended there is no specific uh, supplication um, Hamid from the United Kingdom where um, he says that I leave work late, so by the time I reach the masjid, they have already prayed Isha and two rakahs. I want to earn the reward which is delivered in the hadith, whoever attends the prayer and with the imam until he finishes, he will get the reward of praying for the whole night in tahajjud or qiyam. Well, if the person have an access to attend the prayer from the beginning and out of negligence, out of laziness, he won't late, he won't get the reward. If a person is working to provide for the family and he's doing his best and his niya is that if I have a chance I would attend from the beginning and also on the weekend, on the days on which he's not working, he comes and he attends the prayer from the beginning to end, then according to his intention, Allah the Almighty will reward him. Also, <coughs> excuse me, when you attend with the Imam and he has already prayed the Isha and Turakas of Taraweeh, Join the Imam with the intention of praying Isha first. Then after praying Isha, you can uh, continue the rest of your Taraweeh. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. I know we have some very serious questions. I hope inshallah we'll be able to begin by answering them tomorrow inshallah. Until then, I'll leave you all in the care of Allah. I will say this and I will pray for Allah and for you. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 